All right, everyone. I know that the other day I said that I didn't want to talk about the presidential debate fallout any further, but I mean, people are still talking about it, so I figured let's give people uh, what they want. Uh, one thing that I did see, though, was Nancy Pelosi's legendary cope over the debate performance. I know a lot of people are saying right now, well, Biden is going to drop. Um, they're going to kick him out and they're going to force him out, basically. That would be a bad idea. I've already explained the reasons why uh, in brief. Number one, that leaves you with Kamala. Number two, at this point, this late in the, in the race, you seed Nevada and Wisconsin. By the way, that gets Trump pretty close to 270, um, considering that Georgia and North Carolina really don't appear to be competitive at this point. I think it'd be a bad idea. If anything, the uh, wagon circlers fundamentally are correct with regards to Joe Biden. When, when Biden put out the uh, email circular there, his campaign sent out an email circular, and they're like, well, the bedwetters are saying let's drop Biden. Here are the top seven things or whatever to uh, tell your friends to circle the wagons. Fundamentally, they're right. Uh, they're actually not wrong at all. I think that they do better with Joe Biden than they would do better uh, do with any other candidate. Uh, he still probably loses, but... Uh, you know, he, he doesn't get crushed. I think that Newsom would get crushed. Kamala, it wouldn't even be close, and she'd probably manage to lose Hawaii, so yeah, it'd be a big problem. Link in the description, though. Archived, of course. The most legendary cope over the uh, fallout from the debate was from Nancy Pelosi. She was queried about this. You know, here's Biden, you know, something like, I think 72% of Americans believe that he's not cognitively able to continue leading the nation, uh, etc., etc. What does she do? She says, oh, well, look at the other guy. What do the American people think of him? Well, yeah, I can tell you what they generally think um, if you analyze polls and things like that. There are people that have a problem with Donald Trump. There are plenty of TDS sufferers and there are plenty of Dem partisans in the country. But they receive him much more warmly than they do Joe Biden at this point. When she brings up the premise that uh, Donald Trump has dementia, it's actually self-deprecating in a way. It's actually problematic because you're bringing up the specter of dementia, something that people quite clearly saw on stage with Joe Biden. They didn't see it with Donald Trump. If anything, Donald Trump delivered a fairly stellar performance. Uh, he did very well, actually. He maintained a linear speaking pattern. He was quite clearly knowledgeable about what he was talking about. Did he tell several falsehoods? Yeah, damn right he did. He's a fucking politician. I hate to say, I hate to say this to people. Um, and some super Trump fans won't even like it when I say this. Trump lies. Believe it or not, he tells falsehoods. He's a fucking politician at this point. Uh, he is also a corporate boardroom cutthroat. <laughs> of course he lies. He's probably lying with regards to fucking Stormy Daniels. We're not 100% sure, but we're 99% sure. He probably had sex with her while he was married, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, of course, he's going to lie about man, inflation numbers or something like that. He's a fucking politician. Joe Biden did the same thing, and so it doesn't move the metric at all. It makes no difference. But Trump presented himself as presidential, as somebody who was cognitively normal and sane. Joe Biden looked like a goddamn corpse. He looked like a drogger from Skyrim or something like that. He looked like a necromancer had to raise him out of the grave to run for office. He looked like a shambling mummy. Uh, optically speaking, there's no comparison between these two things. Yeah, is Trump old? Yeah, he's like, I don't know, 77, 78, something like that. Of course he's old. He's elderly, quite literally. But he's capable of holding a conversation. He's capable of answering a question. He's capable of making two or three sentences at a time. That makes sense. This is something we didn't see from Joe Biden. Nancy Pelosi is in la-la land. Even many liberal commentators are commentating on this basic fact. And they're saying that Joe Biden should drop out. I do not agree with that. Uh, strategically speaking, if I was the leader of the DNC, I would beg Joe Biden to stay in and say, maybe you should prepare better in, for the September debate. That, that, that might redeem you a little bit. I also liked the part where Nancy Pelosi said, well, basically this is the result of over-preparation. Yes, we've got a new buzz term. I'm sure that I'm going to see that from Harry Sisson and the Krasensteins later. Over-preparation. They prepared him too much for the debate. 
you know, they fed him too much information, and so he wasn't able to apparently speak. You know, he was all raspy, um, but that was because they ran him through the gauntlet over and over again. It's not because he's in his 80s. It's not because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing or where he is sometimes. It's because they prepared him too much. We, we, we had too much of a good thing. We gave him too much of the medicine. No, no, you didn't give him his Dexies. That's the whole problem. Quite clearly, he was unmedicated at the debate. Or only barely medicated. He gave him a Red Bull or something like that. That's the whole fucking problem. What you should have done is jacked him up on Coke or something like that. Then he would have done a little bit better, I think. It would have been very funny. You imagine a coked up Joe Biden. He's snorting lines off the podium every time he's not on camera. That would have been better, actually. You know, you could have just pulled an Obama. You could have had him snort coke on live TV and say, Well, man, I oppose the drug war. I realized I was wrong back in 1994. It's actually some pretty good shit. You could do something like that. You can get it supplied by Mitch McConnell. Apparently, uh, the uh, cocaine yacht thing uh, never really got solved. Nobody ever knew whose coke that was. Normally, uh, whoever owns the property, they're the ones that are charged with the crime. If there's drugs on board their ship or in their home, uh, Mitch McConnell, of course, is uh, gleeful about the fact that that didn't happen. Now, Nancy Pelosi's, uh, she basically had a meltdown. Um, and I see some liberal commentators, they're shaking their heads right now, the more intelligent ones. So, Jimmy Dore, I don't agree with him. Um, I don't watch him regularly, but he is intelligent. Bill Maher, again, uh, he's like a broken clock. He's occasionally right. I don't respect him. He's still going to be voting for Biden. He literally said he would vote for Joe Biden's head in a jar full of blue liquid before he would vote for Donald Trump. I think that's some severe TDS. But when he comes out, and he or Jimmy Dore, some of these people, and they warn the Democratic Party, look, you're being wrong. You, you should have solved this problem months ago. Now it's too late to solve it. Fundamentally, they're right now, aren't they? Nancy Pelosi can circle wagons all she wants, but that's not going to change the reality of the situation. I do not expect that Joe Biden is going to be significantly better at the next debate. I suspect that Donald Trump will crab hammer him again. He'll, he'll ragdoll him, basically. And that's the election. And by then, it'll be far too late. Right now, it's too late. There are several states in which Joe Biden, if he were to stand down, there would be no possibility that the Democrats, no matter who they choose as the nominee, can actually take the state. They can't get Georgia under Georgia's election laws. They can't get Wisconsin. And they can't get Nevada. Uh, okay, again, you're basically handing the election to Donald Trump. At this point, by the way, I think there's one additional factor, which is cock-blocking Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a DEI hire. The only reason that she's the current vice president of the United States is as a counterbalance to an old white dude. That's the only reason that she's there. Jill Biden fucking hates her guts. You can see this any time that they have to interact with one another. Jill is absolutely supporting her husband. She's not being wrong by doing so. She's like, you know, Joe, you know, this great guy and stuff. And for a man of his age, by the way, admittedly, he is doing fairly well. But he's in his 80s. <laughs> That's a big problem. Donald Trump is doing far better for a man of his age than Joe Biden is. And I expect that Donald Trump will actually finish out his term. There are people right now predicting that Joe Biden might not even make it to the election. By the way, what happens? The Democrats were so stupid to allow him to seek re-election. What happens if sometime in August or September, Biden has a medical incident and becomes incapacitated? By the way, allowing you to take him off the ballot in a couple of those states. Uh, it's going to be an absolute shit show. I mean, you'll number one, you'll definitely lose. Number two, you'll be humiliated. Um, it'll be a, a little bit like what's happening at the Tory party in the UK right now. They might disappear. They might get uh, hammered out of existence by Nigel Farage in only a few days, which ironically is on the 4th of July, their, uh, their election. It's very, very mimetic, by the way. I expect Nigel Farage to uh, ignite some fireworks on that night, by the way. It's going to be a hilarious day. Uh, the Democratic Party really screwed the pooch with this. 
They should have had him stand down many months ago. They should have convinced him back in January or February or something. Uh, Joe, you've done a good job. It's time to retire. Um, you know, Joe, please go. But they failed to do that. Well, it's July now. Uh, there's no possibility that they're capable of cycling him out at this point. Uh, unless it's for medical incapacity. And then, again, that only affects a couple of the states. By now, in some states, you would no longer be physically capable of winning. That's the whole problem when people talk about uh, Joe Biden dropping out and, I don't know, M Michelle Obama out of nowhere or something like that. Uh, you're not understanding the political reality of these states' election laws, actually. And so he'll probably stay in. He'll probably lose. Donald Trump will probably be re-elected, re possibly from House arrest. That's a possibility. We're going to wait to see what Merchan says on uh, the 11th, actually. And it's uh, no matter what happens, though, this election is already off the rails. It's only going to get crazier from here. That's a lot about all. Peace out.